So for this video, I got an overwhelming amount of support for the idea of talking about this pseudo connection between autism and being trans. Um, this video will be mostly looking at scientific papers, um, as well as revisiting some things from my uh, how to find a source video and adding a few things to that, which includes impact factor, which was something pretty important that I forgot to mention in that video. Um, this is due to the fact that the vast majority of studies on this are on not very credible journals and the journals that are credible that talk about it admit to it all being self-reported and many of the individuals being undiagnosed with autism. Um, so I will be going into that and that will obviously lead into somewhat of uh, a discussion on self-diagnosis as many of both the credible and more iffy journals um, admit that many of these individuals are undiagnosed or that they are self-reported. And this is actually rather funny because I hadn't looked into this as in depth uh, as I have now whenever discussing this before. So I would often say things like, well, there's not a good way to know how many Xenogender users are self-diagnosed and such. And to an extent, that's still true because this isn't exclusively on Xenogenders, but it does provide support for the idea that many of these people saying that autism affects their gender are self-diagnosed as now I have statistical facts showing that they are majorly undiagnosed people who are self-identifying with autism. So uh, that's enough for the intro. Let's get into it. So before we move along at all, I want to touch on the source credibility thing that I mentioned. And this is due to the fact that while I was researching this, um, there were very, very few scientific articles that came up regarding this topic at all. And the ones that showed any kind of link that didn't criticize the validity of the self-reporting or undiagnosed status are from journals with low impact scores that are not published on major uh, journal databases and that are just generally not the most credible sources. So the first thing I want to address is impact score, which is not an entirely defining factor of a scientific journal, as obviously a newer journal uh, is going to start out with a lower or non-existent impact score. But if you don't know what this is, an impact score is a measure of how many times that journal, not the specific article, but the journal as a whole, has been cited um, in other studies and assessments and such. So, for example, a really, really flawed study on why Bigfoot is real is obviously not going to be cited by any other major studies, and as such, a journal that only publishes things like that would have a low or non-existent impact score. The average impact score, which can vary between types of journals, but in general is an 8. A 10 is considered an excellent source, and a 3 or below is considered a poor or uncredible source. The main journal that I see cited in this is the Journal of LGBT Health. Now, I won't say this is a bad journal. It is peer-reviewed. It appears to be newer, um, and it does not have the worst impact score ever. It has a 5. But that is still significantly closer to what is considered essentially no longer usable um, as it is to a higher-level journal like ones that I have cited before in uh, my videos. And this doesn't mean discredit uh, its information at all. It is worth looking at. Um, but it is something that should be taken with a grain of salt. As far as I'm aware also, um, at least this specific study, I'm not sure about any of their other studies, um, have not been placed on major journal databases like PubMed, NCBI, etc. Um, but are on a publishing website that I have never heard of. Um, and considering that I have a list of over 100 sources in some of my videos, Kind of, I mean, like, I'm no expert, I'm not a scientist, but I am a little shocked that I came across one that I have never even heard of, um, and that does not necessarily look like a publishing uh, website. That's not to say everything on this website is bad or that it's a bad website, it's simply to say it was unable to be published on a more widely accessible and used uh, publishing website which I feel like says something about its credibility. Again, it's not a defining thing. It's just all of the little things add up. <laughs> this study was also in 2014, which isn't that old. Not horrible. Um, I don't know. It's, it's not the best source. It's definitely better than no source, but it is not the best source. 
And for the last thing on this commonly cited source, it's worth noting that this is not an open source. Um, you have to either be a part of a company or school that allows you to access it or purchase permission to read the whole thing. So what's accessible on the website is the abstract, which comes down to, I believe, I'm looking at it right now, one, two, three, four paragraphs, um, one of which is a single sentence. And that doesn't necessarily say anything about the credibility of an article that's just an abstract. It's just saying that people who cite this do not have access to the full amount of information that it provides uh, unless they're willing to go pay for this whole journal uh, or for permission to this article, which, considering that this is one of the only times I've ever seen this uh, group of people use scientific sources, is not likely. And even if it was, it would be unable to be shared as a source to those who they're trying to convince. It also, even if it was a super credible study, does not necessarily prove anything. Um, I mean, it, it, what it says, I'll just read uh, the results verbatim. The limited ability to articulate an inner experience, deficits in theory of mind, along with the intolerance of ambiguity as a manifestation of the cognitive rigid rigid rigidity characteristics of ASD may present special difficulties in regard to gender identity formation and consolidation and create challenges in psychotherapy. However, what's funny about that is below the conclusion of this, um, and this whole thing will be linked in the description if you want to read the abstract. the conclusion says, the author suggests that ASD does not preclude gender transition and that the individual with high functioning autism are capable of making informed decisions regarding their medical care and life choices. The authors also consider the possible challenges and suggest techniques for assisting such clients in exploring their gender identities. So while I just spent a lot of time kind of discrediting this article because admittedly it is not the best, um, it does show that these people don't read sources because the first three paragraphs sort of agree with them. I could see how they got that, but they clearly neglect to either read or mention the conclusion, which suggests that people with autism are fully capable of determining what their gender identity is, and it does not create some kind of little blurred inability to understand it. Um, and I think that even if... Uh, this was a great study, even though it's a subpar study. It, it doesn't matter, honestly. I mean, it matters because I want people who may be trying to use this in the future to understand sourcing. Um, but it also shows that people who cite this study not only don't understand how to check the credibility of a scientific journal, which admittedly is not something you learn in high school for the most part, but also that they don't read their studies or they are voluntarily cherry picking, which I'm considering that it's the latter considering how painfully short this abstract is. And the next thing I want to address is the more credible studies that I found talking about this um, are all, they're, they're not studies in the sense that the other studies I talk about where their brain scans or whatever, they're just in a different area. They are, they use data from self-reporting surveys and literally use the word undiagnosed to say there is a plethora of people self-reporting undiagnosed autism along with being transgender or non-binary. And disregarding the fact that there is a major lack of research in this area at all, the research that does exist, if anything to me, suggests more the connection I've linked in other videos that is to an extent still Maybe correlation doesn't equal causation in this case, whatever, but leans towards suggesting the idea that there is a connection between inclusionist, xenogender types, whatever, and self-diagnosis. And I mean, of course, the study wasn't exclusively on inclusionists or anything. I doubt anything like that will ever exist, considering for the vast majority it's internet drama. But it's also worth noting that the vast majority of trans medicalists are also against self-diagnosis, Meaning it's probably unlikely that the people who selected that they experience autistic traits and are not diagnosed with autism but self-identify that way and also decided to select transgender in these surveys are probably not the people that seem to be active on r slash fake disorder cringe and r slash true scum. But, you know, it it's obviously not definitive, but based on experiences as a trans person experiences 
as a person who's anti-self-diagnosis, those categories tend to overlap. And also the fact that a lot of trans meds prefer to be stealth or not make being trans their whole thing, and therefore may not even participate in studies like this at all. And, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. That is purely me drawing an assumption off of these studies that seems like a logical conclusion, but I'm by no means stating that that is a fact. It simply makes sense along with all the other information that, yeah, self-diagnosed autism and saying you're trans tend to go hand in hand. And, I mean, it's also worth considering that trans medicalists are the minority, meaning that even if trans medicalists are a part of that category, there are still fewer of us and therefore are probably underrepresented in that study, which doesn't matter on the credibility of the study, but it does matter when talking about this topic. So I'm going to move on from talking about specific studies or journal credibility uh, and whatever. But everything I mentioned uh, will be cited under the uh, description. And I usually don't label my sources because they're all kind of intermingled. But since these ones have varying levels of credibility, I will be stating which one is which. Um, but to continue on off of that, even the study that is often used by these people, credible or not, uh, does not suggest that autistic people are in any way unable to differentiate what gender they identify as differently than autistic people. And, you know, I tend to, when people go up with this, say, dude, I'm autistic, that's bullshit, uh, I'm autistic and trans, I know very well that I am a man, and then people go, oh, well, your experience isn't universal, which would be a fair argument if it wasn't for the fact that the research doesn't support their position either. That, yeah, my experience isn't universal, but my experience also is supported by the data and yours is not. And this isn't to say that I think these people are intentionally using autism to be make excuse to use xenogenders and such. But again, it connects to another video uh, I made, which is the uh, How To Cutes Create More Detransitioners video, which is that misinformation um, can cause, like, strongly believing in misinformation can cause you to act with that misinformation in mind. And I mean, this is a pretty straightforward concept. People who have the misinformation that vaccines give autism won't give their kids vaccines because they believe that misinformation to be true and they're not doing that maliciously but it doesn't change the fact that them not vaccinating their kids and also saying that vaccines cause autism is both stigmatizing autism vaccines and harming their children <laughs> and i think most people could agree they're, they're not malicious but they're still doing something wrong based on misinformation and this kind of applies here as i think that people who identify with xenogenders in correlation with autism or other neurodivergencies have both a misunderstanding of what autism is and what gender is and what being trans is. If agoraphobia is explained to someone as, I'm more of an inside person, I don't really like going outside, I don't like hiking or going to the park, I prefer to stay inside and play video games, and the person genuinely believes that because it's been drilled into their head and it's been stigmatized to think anything otherwise, that person may believe they have agoraphobia because they don't really like going outside. It's hot where they live and it's annoying and they don't like it. And then they decide that I must have agoraphobia. That would be a logical conclusion to come to based on that definition of agoraphobia. However, that definition is wrong. That's not what agoraphobia is. And that person does not experience agoraphobia. They simply don't like going outside. So whether or not they are misinformed and doing so with good faith intentions it's still not true that they have agoraphobia because their definition of it is wrong. The wrong definition applies to them. The definition they're using does correctly describe them, but it's not what the word actually means. And that's the same thing with being trans. When people see being trans as dressing in a way that doesn't conform with your birth gender, or a confusion on gender roles, which can come from autism, because autism can make you question societal meanings, not understand why they're there, etc. They may think, I don't understand why this gender role exists. It's stupid. I'm not going to follow it. And also maybe be gender nonconforming. And to them, that's what gender means. Gender is simply the social status, the social space that you occupy when interacting with other people. 
And by that definition, them not liking the gender roles that they're assigned to and dressing in a way that doesn't align with those gender roles would make them trans. But unfortunately, that is not the correct definition of trans. And I feel like that's where the autism thing comes into it, is that autism does make you not understand or question societal norms. And those societal norms can include gender roles, which may result in an autistic person not understanding why they are expected to fulfill a certain role or do a certain thing or act a certain way based on their gender. And that is a valid and real feeling. That is a real thing that comes with autism. But that also doesn't actually define your gender. Gender and gender roles are not the same thing. So by their definition, them not understanding gender roles makes them trans. But being trans is not that. Being trans is experiencing dysphoria to either be non-binary or be the opposite sex. And being trans is a physical neurological thing. And I think this is also where the it's a social construct thing comes from to an extent. Because there are portions of gender that are a social construct. Like I said, gender roles are a social construct and they're admittedly a stupid one. But that doesn't mean that gender as a whole in its entirety is a social construct. But they boil it down to that. So I don't think that all of these people saying autism affects my gender, I'm Audi gender, or I'm a Xeno gender, or whatever, are necessarily being disingenuous. Because to them, the way that they describe gender, autism does affect it. It's just that the way they describe gender is wrong. And this is a portion of why I think the dysphoria thing is so important. Because these people may not experience any dysphoria at all. I mean, they may, but I'm talking about people who don't. They may not experience any dysphoria at all. They're, let's say, one of the people who says, I'm non-binary. They're AFAB. They present completely AFAB. They go by she, her pronouns, maybe she, they. They're completely okay with being referred to as feminine in every way. They do not want any changes to their body. They have simply changed their label and nothing else. And I'm not talking about any of these things individually. I'm talking about them all combined. Um, using she when you're non-binary or presenting feminine when you're non-binary is not an issue. I mean, all of these things in combination that absolutely nothing has changed except the label. But this person may believe that they're trans because they struggle to understand gender roles. And they're autistic. And that affects their ability to understand those gender roles. And whenever they're being pelted left and right with the idea that gender is a social construct and gender roles are just stupid made-up things, which to be fair they are, but again, in combination, that person may believe that their autism making them have a hard time understand why their mother wants them to wear a dress to church instead of jeans could result in them thinking they're trans. Um, and by the definition that they've been thrown at left and right, they would be trans. However, when this person decides to transition, if they do, if they decide to go on hormones, if they decide to get top surgery, which a lot of quote-unquote non-dysphoric people do, um, which I've seen for a variety of reasons, ranging from aesthetics to trying to prove a point to fitting in to whatever, whenever they may go decide to do that in the future and they don't have dysphoria, there is, they're going to get dysphoria. They're going to have a problem. Because they saw gender as purely social and they decided to do this thing that trans people do. And since they weren't trans, it didn't work for them. And unfortunately, some of them are stubborn enough in it to just keep doing it, even though it makes them unhappy. And some of them detransition and some of them really did have dysphoria and just didn't understand what it was and are fine with it. But nonetheless it presents a problem for them. And there's a thing that I've heard a lot of people say that I think is a good indicator of, um, I guess, transness. I mean, it's a thought experiment. It's not like a conclusive thing. But if you were alone on a desert island, you would never see another person ever again in your life. Would you still want to transition? And that doesn't have to mean surgery or hormones. Whatever transition works for you, whatever transition you currently intend to go through, would you still do that transition if you were never going to see another person again? Because that essentially takes it to, do I feel this way because I am meant to be whatever gender I identify with? Or do I feel this way because of the social implications of the gender that I was born as or the social constructs surrounding that gender? Because if your answer is no, you're not trans, you don't like society. But if the answer is yes, 
it shows that it is part of your neurology, it is part of your psychology, it is part of who you are, and it is not in any way a social statement or a, miscon or a misconstruing of gender roles or whatever. It's simply, I am trans and no outside, in, out, no outside source is affecting that. So I guess I wanted to end on that. I kind of wish I had included that earlier, but it's going to be weird to edit it in now. So, um, But I guess just to conclude, there are no studies showing that autism, uh, people diagnosed with autism have higher rates of being trans or higher mental health issues regarding their trans identity. The sources usually cited by these people are not credible and even not being super credible are not proving their point anyway because they go on to say that being autistic does not affect your ability to understand gender and the fact that they don't have a proper definition of gender so their improper definition fits them but it's not actually what makes them trans um and yeah that's that's it i guess uh if i i feel like i have more to say but i couldn't think of it there's just like something that i feel like i'm missing so if anyone has any questions or feedback or whatever, um, I will include comments on this video along with my comment response video that I'm going to be doing uh, for next week's video. This is just a little extra because I haven't uploaded because my computer was dead. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, Hold it. I stare at the populace in prayer. I look at them talking to the air.